Jeff Bezos Blue Origin has just set a new Guinness World Record on its sixth private human space flight, taking an American woman, an Egyptian, and a Portugal to space last week. The world's public opinion seems to be more open to the rare changes of the company. Notably, at the same time, the Blue Origin copy project also suddenly made new progress to shock SpaceX and Elon Musk. Well, is Jeff Bezos really speeding Blue Origin up? Is there any chance Blue Origin will catch up to SpaceX? Well, take a seat and we'll find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. First, I need you to understand why I'm calling the Blue Origin Copy Project and who exactly Jeff is copying his homework from. Blue Origin has a secret project named Jarvis, apparently named after the character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This project is the company's effort to develop a fully reusable upper stage for Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket. Sounds weird, but the reusable second stage program appears to have drawn inspiration from SpaceX. In making both the first and second stages of New Glenn fully reusable, Bezos is emulating Musk's ambitious plan to land and reuse both the Super Heavy Booster and Starship upper stage. When Musk formally announced the Starship project in 2016, many in the industry were skeptical of his plan to build a massive reusable launch system. Bezos had been asking his senior staff about reusable upper stages, but advisors told him such an approach was unlikely to work. Bezos also seems to have been told the SpaceX fail-forward method of rapidly prototyping and testing Starships with few processes and procedures would be unlikely to succeed. However, Bezos took note as SpaceX launched and landed its Starship vehicle in 2020. This is one of the reasons he decided to initiate a project named Jarvis at Blue Origin within the reusable second stage program. In an effort to move quickly and test whether SpaceX's iterative design philosophy could be mimicked, Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos has empowered the engineers leading Project Jarvis to innovate in an environment unfettered by rigorous management and paperwork process. This has led to the rapid development of the tank rolled out to launch Complex 36 last August. At the same time, another team has been studying three different approaches for the design of a re-entry vehicle, sources said. One is to fit the upper stage with large wings so it would look and function something like a space plane, separating from the first stage, delivering its payload, and then returning to a runway. But in the past, Bezos has expressed doubts about wings. Some people like parachutes. None of these are bad. The reason I like vertical landing is because it scales so well. With wings, they scale pretty well to a certain size, but they end up being a lot of dead weight to carry. The second approach involves using an aerospike engine that would double as a heat shield during re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. This approach has promise, but it likely would necessitate the design and construction of a new engine, which would be an expensive and time-consuming process. The final approach is similar to SpaceX Starship concept, land the vehicle vertically using a combination of flaps and propulsive burns. This appears to be the leading contender among the three approaches. Regardless of the final design, the propellant tanks for each of the three designs would be cylindrical, allowing Project Jarvis teams to move ahead with its development program. Unfortunately, when Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin were busy chasing lawsuits, this project seems to have been left behind. It wasn't until this April that we got a new picture of Project Jarvis in the high resolution and closest distance that we've seen so far. The image was shared by a Twitter account named Tom McCool. Well, it looks eerily familiar. I wonder if that reminds anyone else of another steel rocket being built in Texas named Starship Super Heavy. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I know that Super Heavy is the first stage, but let's take a closer look at the structure on top in this picture. It looks really like grid fins. Okay, anyway, this project got its idea from SpaceX in the first place. It's okay to be a bit similar, but honestly, it would be interesting to see how it evolves. And the good news is maybe Jeff now realizes what makes feathers soar to orbit. Last month, a sudden and big change occurred in their Jarvis test tank, which was previously to the northeast of the complex. But now Blue Origin has moved its Jarvis test tank off of the test stand. The test articles seem to have been moved over to a final resting place north of LC-12. It's unclear why this happened, but it might be that Blue is ready to move over to their next Jarvis test article. Anyway, this is definitely a good sign for this long-delayed project. Besides, hopefully the extension on the side of BO's factory means it's getting closer to squeaking out something. 
Beyond building and launching rockets, Blue Origin also appears to be focusing more on in-space activities. One of the major projects is related to in-space propulsion. Recently, ULA CEO Tori Bruno shocked us when revealing that both flight BE-4 engines are making significant progress, ready to beat SpaceX's Raptor 2. According to the update, two flight engines needed for Vulcan's first flight will be able to deliver soon, and Vulcan should be ready to fly before the end of the year. Look. Here's a picture of the freshly completed BE-4 engine in the stand at Blue Origin's factory. Notably, it also is the first flight engine for Vulcan's first flight. In other shared photos, we can see both BE-4 engines side by side, in which the first fully assembled engine on your left was, and the second almost done engine on your right. Interestingly, also in a series of tweets that day, Bruno revealed that first flight FE-1 engine off to Texas for a quick acceptance test firing, then on to ULA's rocket factory indicator. There, ULA engineers will test and integrate those engines into the Vulcan rocket and launch. What Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin have just achieved is indeed a lot to celebrate. However, the excitement didn't last very long for Jeff's company when soon after its rival SpaceX conducted dual static fires with Booster 7 and Starship 24. This is the first time SpaceX has static fired a Starship booster at the South Texas Orbital Launch Pad, making important milestones for both. Super Heavy B-7 survived the test without visible issue and was safely depressurized and detanked soon after. The lone Raptor engine also appeared to perform perfectly and shut down cleanly after a stable three or four second burn. Booster 7's first static fire, also the second static fire test of a Super Heavy, was the first test of an upgraded Raptor 2 engine on any rocket prototype. At the cost of slightly less efficient combustion, Raptor 2 is designed to produce up to 230 tons or 510,000 foot-pounds of thrust, almost 25% more than Raptor 1, 185 tons, or 410,000 foot-pounds. In short, Blue Origin is making good strides, but it's clearly not enough to catch up to SpaceX. Jeff still has a long way to go, and he has to reach orbit first. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.